Molded by Broken Hands is the sixth full-length album from Grey Skies Fallen. This is a New York-based doom metal band, a melodic doom metal band as it stands right now, but they have a long history reaching back to the mid-90s when they formed and the, the late 90s when they put out their first couple records, uh, getting noticed as more of a melodic death doom metal band with progressive metal influences. And uh, they've had a pretty consistent discography in that sense where they've they'd slowly uh, changed their tune over time developed new ideas and different styles that all centered around a kind of a melodramatic form of doom metal and i would say extreme doom metal wasn't always important to their sound they were always kind of a death doom metal band and that's kind of how i would still describe their 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 name and their discography but on the last two records they've taken on a little bit more of an epic heavy metal feeling a traditional heavy metal style and that has always been there in a sense but they put aside the keyboards a little bit uh, on the last record and they've amplified that traditional heavy metal sound rather than the more melodramatic 90s uh, sort of peace fill three sound so of course that leads us probably somewhere along the lines of my dying bride uh, on paper but if you go back to the previous record um cold dead lands you f you'll find that if you're patient and you sit there with those longer pieces you get a sense that this is uh kind of trading hands between traditional uh heavy metal and melodic death doom metal and a lot of other ideas in between so this is the follow-up to that record you can tell i i liked that record and uh, we'll cut to a song here just to see what what does this one sound like Raise your eyes, eternal eyes The winter chills us, cracks in time Demons rise, they come tonight Strong. For a band that's been around for so long, there's a lot to really take in and a lot to say about them because they do cover quite a lot of ground on this record and they sort of master every moment uh, in a way that is not too far from what like Godthrim have been doing lately what Isol have been doing more recently but also uh, some of their their ticks and their traits lean back to the classic uh, bands like October Tide and Solstice as well where they combine those those ideas where there's the uh, the epic heavy doom metal style there's the uh, traditional uh, 90s doom in there and there's also uh, very much the melodramatic melodic metal side of them which is uh, less the beauty and the beast style that people might think of and more something uh, closer to the peaceful three in spirit it's um not an uncommon sound, but they've made it their own over time, and I think especially the last several records where they've focused in on this this mood, uh, some very revelatory lyrics, very personal records that are uh, very much. It feels like it just they're they've been doing this for so long that it comes naturally to them, and that, that it feels uh, less forced than it did on their earlier records, which were putting out as many riffs as they could. They were trying a lot in their uh, compositional fortitude, showing off what they could do on a lot of those records. And by the time we hit the 2010s into now, really this is a much more mature artist that has a lot of uh, hindsight for a lot of you know what works in music and what doesn't and all their skills especially the vocalist and a lot of the the compositional play between the two guitars has become uh it just can't help but have done so well and uh, improved so much over time to the point where they're really nailing the the song craft here on this record there's a lot of uh not only is there literally a lot of guitar harmonies and a lot of uh, harmonized vocals on this record, there's a lot more harmony between elements, and that makes for songs that are more affecting, more emotionally driven, uh, very direct with their lyrics. And the overall uh, verve of the record and the way that it plays out is that it sort of finds a point of confrontation and sort of leans into more conversational points before it ends up uh going from ruin to hope is basically the way that, that it plays out the way i saw it and uh, you can kind of feel that in some of the main uh, singles and whatnot overall you know i won't get too long-winded here there is a lot to take in from this record because there is still a, bit, a little bit of that that prog metal feeling in what they do there's a little bit of the epic heavy metal stride to some of these songs there's big choruses there's lots of s solos that are tuneful you know and there's a lot 
going into this record that they might be hard to focus on just one aspect or personality tick here to make it instantly recognizable. Uh, for me, uh, knowing Cold Dead Hands or Cold, Cold Dead Lands as well as I did, uh, coming into this record, it was a natural progression beyond that point and a lot of shorter pieces and more direct songwriting made for a more memorable album and maybe a more representative album for the band that I think is a high point for them so far. And of course, if you have taste in what they were doing in the 90s and the 2000s, uh, I think that will still stand up pretty well here, even though they've dropped a lot of the progressive and the keyboard driven stuff here, though there are more keyboards on this record overall. So a lot of details to catch there, but overall, I think it's a very uh, listenable record, a very uh, memorable experience, and a solid band that have been underrated for, for quite a long time. So for me, that's a high recommendation, a pretty uh, resolute one. I think this is easy to recommend to a general audience, and it is connective emotional doom metal music that I think most more people should hear. So check that out if that's your type of thing, and uh, for, check out some of the songs on the website, and uh, read the review if you will. Hey, yeah. 